friends, Shin here. I was a landlord in California for over 13 years before I moved to Florida. After I moved to Florida, I sold all of my properties in California and used the 1031 exchange to change them into properties here in Florida. I will tell you some of my top reasons on why I did that and why I think California landlords should do the same with their capital. So first of all, California is a very tenant friendly state. It is actually a bit too tenant friendly. During the pandemic, a lot of states and municipalities enacted eviction moratorium to help renters in need. However, in California, some of these moratoriums are still in effect. For example, in Alameda County, which contains Berkeley and Oakland, as of January 2023, these moratoriums are still not over. So this means that some landlords are not able to collect rent for almost three years. And a lot of them did sue the state, but each time the landlords have failed in winning their cases. So this is very bad for landlords, obviously, because they still have to pay their insurance, their taxes, and their mortgages. Additionally, California has a law called AB 1482, which requires landlords to pay some of their tenants a relocation assistance if they want to terminate the lease. So this law does not apply to every property, but in some jurisdictions, the tenant buyouts are even more extreme. For example, in San Francisco, most recently, there was a tenant buyout for $410,000 when a landlord wanted to end their lease. So I'm not a psychic, but I think a lot of these laws will not get better for landlords in the future. So in contrast, in Florida, we do not have required tenant buyouts. So evictions are fairly straightforward here in the state. So number two reason is related to tenant and friendly laws but it is rent control multiple municipalities already has very strict rent control that limits rent increases to less than two percent and in the long term that is really not great for landlords also AB 1482 applies statewide to places where there isn't a local rent control so the rent is capped at 10 percent every year in contrast florida has a statute relating to price controls and i'll just read it here it says no county municipality or other entity of local government shall adopt or maintain an effect in ordinance or a rule which has an effect of imposing price controls upon a lawful business so most recently actually orange county in florida which contains orlando passed the rent control law but now that's been tied up in the courts and nothing has happened with the rents so effectively florida does not have rent control with yearly inflation if you're unable to increase your rent prices then effectively you are losing money as a landlord Next, I would like to talk about rental yields. So a rental yield is how much you're earning on your capital. So in California, this is actually terrible. In general, it is not possible to buy a cash flow positive property right now in places like the Bay Area. I'll just give a random example. This house in San Jose, it's a three bedroom, two bath with about 1,200 square feet. It is selling for over 1.3 million. And a comparable home in the same zip code is renting for about $4,200. If you do the math, and if this were bought with a 20% conventional loan with the current rates, then the landlord would be losing about four to $5,000 a month. So in contrast, if you were able to borrow that much money, you can easily buy four to six properties here that are larger and rent them for more than what you are paying in expenses. Basically, you can be cash flow positive here in Northeast Florida. Now, if you bought a property a long time ago in California, you're probably still cash flow positive, but you're probably sitting on a lot of equity that is not earning a high yield. I will just use my own property as an example. One house I sold in California, I sold it for about $575,000. I actually bought it for only $176,000 and at the time when I sold it, I was renting it out from about market price which was $2,400 a month. So even though I was cash flow positive because I bought it at a low price, 
I was not getting a very high yield. I was only getting about three to 4% net on the equity I had on that property. So what I did with that house was that I exchanged it into two properties in the Jacksonville area and I'm getting about double the rent. So at that time when I did the exchange, it was actually very difficult to buy here in Jacksonville. The inventory was very low. So right now, if you do an exchange, you can probably have more choices. But since I bought the properties in Florida, I actually gain a lot of equity. So whereas in California, comparable properties have not gained as much. Essentially, over two years, I collected a lot more rent and I gained a lot more equity. And if you do an exchange to Florida right now, you can still find better deals than what you would have in California. Another thing is to compare the properties themselves. Like I said in my earlier example, you can buy a home in San Jose for $1.4 million and it is gonna be an older home. So over here in Florida, in St. Johns County especially, most of the homes here that you can find are built after 2010. So they're quite new and as a landlord, you should know that newer properties need less maintenance and less maintenance means less costs to you. And in general, the homes here are larger and newer for the same price. Finally, there is the rental demand. Rental demand is quite high in California, but it is also very high here. And one reason for that is that because the area has been historically very affordable, a lot of people are homeowners. So if, for example, in St. John's County right here, 81% of the houses are owner occupied. So now we have a lot of people moving in from out of state and also, especially here in Northeast Florida, because we have been affordable, we're getting a lot of people moving in from other parts of Florida that have been very expensive, like Miami and Tampa. Those areas have gotten even more expensive in the last couple years. So essentially we have in-state and out-of-state migration into our area for a limited amount of rentals. So so when you have only 20% of the housing units that are rentals and then tons of people are moving in, our rents have gone up quite a bit. And this is a trend that I think will continue to happen as the housing prices go up in Florida. So this is just a quick overview of why I exchanged all my capital over from California to Florida. My business is mostly long-term rentals, so I did not talk about vacation rentals. That is yet another large area of real estate investing that is thriving in Florida. I am working on a furnished rental and that will come up in a future video most likely. Did not go into a lot of details about leverage and how a 1031 works step by step. So if you're actually thinking of a 1031 exchange, you should really work with a realtor who has been through it and understands real estate investing. So if you want me to help you run the numbers, please contact me with my information below. I will continue to talk about about investing, living, and fishing in Florida on this channel. So please subscribe if you're interested in those topics. I linked a lot of resources below in the description box relating to the topics I talked about. So you can do your own research and I will see you next time.